I would teach people to swing a racket like that, and some of them would do this. And so uh, what would I do? Well, I would say, I'd go to them, and I'd say, <clears throat> Steve, it's not like this. It's like this. And look, Steve's nodding at me. He gets it, yeah? And he goes back on the court and goes, how's that, Alan? Well, no. No, I mean, it, it, it's kind of OK, but you know, it needs to be horizontal. Can you see I'm giving him a little more knowledge now? More K in the equation needs to be horizontal. And look, he's nodding at me again. He gets it. And he goes back on the court and he goes, OK, well, how's that? No! <laughs> because he's obviously deaf. He didn't get it the first few times, did he? Or, or he's French. <laughs> it's a British thing. He's not deaf. He's not stupid. His issue is he can't tell the difference between this movement and this movement, between how he thinks he behaves and how he actually behaves. And until I do something to help him be more aware of that gap in his behavior, then he can't, he won't take any responsibility for doing it differently. And just telling him this is what you should do doesn't necessarily raise his awareness, help him discover that gap in his behavior. The only reason you keep doing this is you think that is what I'm asking of you because you can't tell the difference between those two things. And that to me is the biggest dilemma we have to wrestle with as coaches. The gap between what people think they do and what they actually do. And you, most managers think, oh yes, I see that gap in the people I have to coach. That's not the issue. The biggest issue is the gap in your behavior between what you think you do and what you actually do. That's the toughest part of coaching is getting coaches to change their behavior, not getting people, to, the, the others, to change their behavior. As a tennis coach, and I was living in London at the time, people would take two lessons and they'd say, you know, they'd compare notes. All he ever does is ask me, what's my goal and what am I paying attention to? I can do that for myself and I'll save myself the money. What do you call it when people say, I can do this for myself? What are your buzzwords for that? Personal leadership? Stephen Covey, too. What else? Initiative. Initiative, learning, independence, empowerment is the most common word I hear, yeah? And what I call it for you is freedom. It frees you to go and do high leverage stuff, unless you tell me, no, it's all right, Alan. I really don't have enough to do anyway. Anybody wrestling with that? Okay. The more you are the solution provider for them, the more they will come to you for solutions. You are training them to behave that way. So if you, can, if you think you don't have enough time because you're so busy handling stuff for your team, I'm going to get in your face a little bit here, they're not the problem. You are part of the problem because of how you choose to interact with them. And it will not change until you change your behavior. Our conversation kind of took a twist to where something that I've been struggling with and I thought was a real problem, we were able to walk through it with the questions and I was kind of able to finally step back and get out of my own head and analyze what I actually I have done and the progress we have made. So not really did we come to resolution, I was able to figure out that the problem I thought was this huge issue actually wasn't so much of an issue anymore. And that's a breakthrough. Yeah. I love the way you said it. I was able to step back and get out of my own head get past my own interference. It's very common that people will say those things. And I want to stress, sometimes the breakthrough is recognizing it isn't much of an issue. Yeah, that frees you to move on. Think of, think of all the energy that saves 
the kind of psychological air that frees up. Sir. Right here. I guess one of uh, the biggest aha moments I had so when I looked at this, this is, this is something that not only can I use as a coach, but what an RSM and an RSR can use when they're in a selling process. I mean, you look at managing the manager and essentially what, what they do when they sell. If they were to have this open, candid conversation with their manager at a Walmart at a food account, you're essentially gaining a, a roadmap to what that store's goals is, you know, what their store's specific goals are, how they align with us exactly. and create a plan. So that was something that kind of took me back. It's a, what, a consultative selling process is the jargon that gets used around it? That's, that's one of our favorites. Okay, so here's what I, look, to me this stuff is all about how do we dialogue in, with people in ways that are, as Covey would say, win-win. That's all we're doing. We, we've got a, a map here, a road map for how to have well, not only how to have dialogue, but actually a roadmap for how to clear your own thinking. How many of you are, have, have folks on your teams who you wish would think it through a little more for themselves? Really interesting. How many of you have been with those teams for more than six months, with those people for more than six months? Okay, here's what you might not be very comfortable with. You are now part of the problem. Because we human beings, we're, it's systems theory. Whatever, however I communicate causes a response in you, and however you respond causes a response in me, and it goes back and forth like that. If they are still doing that behavior, it's because you have not changed yours. And the temptation for us as coaches is to always point over there and go, well, they need to change. They have not changed because you have not changed. You're continuing to use the same behaviors that continue to bring the same response. Does that make sense? Ooh, it's a bit quiet now. You worry me. Okay. It's changeable. I'm just saying the easiest way to change it is for you to do something different. And it's a cop-out for you to say, oh, it's their fault. No, it isn't. It's your responsible. You're the one with the insight. You're so smart that you can see the behavior. Then it's your responsibility to do something different. Because they're obviously blind because nothing's changed. 